right, so it's time for us to go leave town to find those Sandflyer parts. It's going to sound a little different in this episode as well as the next episode because, well, I've been having quite a few problems with recording this series. I just keep running into difficulties. The problem with this episode was, well, my commentary audio got kind of messed up. It got all turned into static, and you can't understand what I'm saying. It's kind of ear-piercing. It's not usable. So I had to mute the audio for the recording, and now I am going and playing through here again. Now, I wanted to go and do a live commentary for this entire game, because, well, it's a new game to me, pretty much. And, well, I kind of wanted to catch my reactions to things. Because, I mean, it's not the first time that I've played through a game blind so but it, it is something that doesn't happen all that often so it's something I don't do very often so I kind of wanted to catch the commentary in the act fortunately it's not going to happen with every episode because I keep running into difficulties here and I, <laughs> I didn't have a save set up before this episode and I didn't feel like starting the game over again so here we go all right, so we have this little puzzle here with the with the rudder to this crashed sand flyer. Seeing as I, I guess, figured this out as I was going, you move the rudder to the left or to the right in order to open up a different pathway to access that treasure chest down there. Now look at the, like I get it's just a video game, but look at the barriers, like it's waist high. You tell me you couldn't climb up over that. Nina's got freaking wings. She couldn't fly over that. It's gotten kind of ridiculous here. It is just a video game, so I shouldn't give it too much crap. The fact that your characters can't jump at all makes for these kind of these barriers being a little bit ridiculous here. But, you know, I shouldn't give it too much shit because it is a video game and they did have to take um, aesthetics and the graphical style and all that kind of thing into into consideration when they went and they designed these levels. So, okay, they didn't want to have these big tall walls. Even if you did have the big tall walls, the fact that Nina has wings kind of throws a wrench into that whole thing. I guess you could say that she didn't want to leave Ryu behind, so she she couldn't just fly over anything. I, I wonder what the... I think I might have mentioned this before, but I wonder what the sort of in storyline explanation is, or not explanation, but limitations to her ability to fly are. Because she definitely is capable of flying in game as well as in cutscenes and all that. And I went, I watched that that uh, cutscene that happens during the game game start screen, and she's definitely flying around. But it makes, but I'm thinking the canon uh, capabilities that she has are really just to go up and down. Oh, look at that. This is, this is kind of a stupid puzzle. <laughs> I mean, look at the way that this thing is set up. Once we go outside, we'll, we'll notice it. Okay, look at where we are. Where we're trying to get is like right over on the right side of this. Like and Nina gave it like a wider view of it there. On the right side of this, we're trying to get to the top of that platform there. And once we get downstairs, we're going to... Uh, I don't know what I was doing here. I'm sure I said something, but I'm not... Oh, I picked up the brass helm. And only Ryu can equip it, but I was stupid enough to have bought one of those back when we were at town. <laughs> I guess if I held off, I could have saved some money. And there are instructions for this thing on the wall. And standing near the anchor will activate it. <laughs> so look at this. You, you, they step on that anchor, and it just raises them up like an elevator. And then they step off to the side. You're telling me Nina couldn't just fly up there like that? And look at that little platform right there. It's knee-high. You're telling me they couldn't get off of that knee-high platform? They had to take a freaking anchor ride? 
it, it is ridiculous. And even if Nina can really only go up and down, like you're going, you can't go up and then down like a foot to the side of where you went up. Come on. But then again, I shouldn't give him too much shit. But I have a feeling that this is the kind of design and kind of questions I'm going to have to be asking the entire game. And I really shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> Look at that. It's like little platforms all the way down. You could step down it. I know desert sand's hard to navigate, but still. Hey, some old dude with shovels. So you gotta go to where the dog barked, and then you gotta go find the sandflyer parts. Now, it turns out there's more than just the sandflyer parts. I don't know. I never found a dog. I mean, dogs have a good sense of smell, but I don't think they're good enough to detect chunks of metal underground. A mechanic dog. Hmm. Well, you only have so many times you can dig before your shovel breaks, because they were... I don't know, they ordered them off a wish or something like that. Ah, the shovel broke. <laughs> now, hold on. So, even though I cut it out of this, I did go back and I did pick up all of the stuff that was under there. And it was a sage's staff, which is a useless weapon because I already had one. I don't even think I bought that for Nina. I think she already had one. So it just it's just a thing to go and drop at the next vendor I run into. I wonder, is this supposed to be some sort of, like, airship or death, sand, sand flyer, they call them? Airship? I don't know. Graveyard. Or, like, is this where a lot of sand flyers crashed and they just sort of left them here? Or was just this some kind of, like, a salvage yard? Where they go and they just stuck a bunch of wrecked sand flyers and then people go there for the sake of um, finding the parts that they need. Because that's what we're doing here. I guess it's what it seems like. Oh, with the anchor chain retracting. I guess the idea behind that was that they'd cut us off from going back the way, going back up there by retracting the anchor chain. So you sort of like, if I didn't stay there and find all those extra things, which wasn't really worth it, then I would be cut off from all my stuff. Okay, look at this. Now our characters are the same level for the first time. Ryu has a little bit extra power, uh, a fair amount of extra defense, but much lower agility and much lower magic. So really I'd say that even, oh, his HP's higher and her AP is higher. So I'd say, actually, it's kind of like a weird thing to say this, because Nina is always kind of like a secondary character in my playthroughs in the other games. That um, 
She is actually, overall, the better character here. Her strength is high enough to be useful enough to just do regular attacks in games, but she has the added agility and all that kind of stuff, the magic and all that, which increases her utility. So I'd say she's actually more useful in regular fights than Ryu is. Now, she can't turn into a dragon, but I haven't run into many boss battles so far where that's really necessary. Okay, so I cut to racing out of town to camp. You can see what she said, and it turns out we got to go back to the town. I didn't realize it's something we had to do before, but all right. End of episode, though, so thanks for watching.